Into the Wild, as I've been saying to the men, is the most unique Catholic men's retreat I believe in the world today. This kind of event is unlike anything I've ever experienced before. It's, it's really one of a kind. Faith formation and outdoor activities is something that I've always, I've always done, but I've never done the two together. Well, I think in the Catholic Church, there's not a lot of offerings out there for this type of program. Part of it is um, just stretching the guys, challenging the guys. And we really, again, as the King's Men says, we build up men in the role of leader, protector, and provider. They're not the same when they leave on Sunday. They're a changed man. They're a renewed man. We can't go wrong with this location. Just getting away from, from the world and detaching from uh, the cell phones, detaching from email, from the computer, and taking a hike in, in these gorgeous uh, lands of Pennsylvania is a win in itself. I think what separates the Into the Wild experience from other retreat experiences is everything we do is related to that mission. Into the Wild uh, is a outdoor experiential weekend for men. Uh, it's uh, three nights, four days, focused on man's role as leader, protector, and provider. And uh, we match an outdoor activity to each of those roles uh, of masculinity. It really brings together um, the, the faith, obviously, the, the, the sacraments, with outdoor experiential activities that are designed to build up the masculine role of leader, protector, provider, the natural call of all men to lead, protect, and provide. Everything we do is designed to give men skills in those areas. Uh, the weekend is not you know, focused on, on, on lectures. It's really getting out there. We get them doing something and just working together as a team. The activities that we do uh, vary with the day. So on the leader day, uh, we uh, have orienteering. Men take a compass and a map and they actually go through the wilderness and, and try to navigate, uh, and work as a team to, um, to find contact points. And it's something the military has been using for years before GPS came out. So uh, it's a great leadership exercise so men can try different things, take, take risks uh, as a group, collectively draw on their strengths and weaknesses. It's an opportunity for them for, to try out new things and kind of put in place some of the principles we've been talking about. So on the provider day, uh, we, have, we group men into three teams. Okay, one of the teams is the outdoor cooking team. The other team is the fishing team. And the other team is the outdoor church team. So all of these things sort of climax at the uh, feast that we have on Saturday night. The activities that we are doing are for not for ourselves but the love of others. Uh, really the protector day is, is the last day of the retreat. Uh, we have a talk and we have mass on the protector day. The protector day is really designed for men to go back to their communities and engage the culture. So protect women and children, defend the common good. Because the retreat is coming to an end, we don't have necessarily outdoor activities linked to that, but we really challenge the men to take what they've learned on the weekend to action. Uh, and it kind of works out well that way because we want them to go now and become protectors in their community. Probably the best thing about the Kingsmen and the Into the Wild is really, you know, the brothers that I feel united with. The majority of the guys come back for a second and third helping. It's not because they feel like they're, they're missing something uh, as far as they missed something the first time. They're craving the brotherhood. Anytime you're going to be around a group of guys, there's always a question mark in your mind. You know, I don't know, I mean, I, you know, are they better than me? Am I better than them? Is that like a natural comparison? With 100 guys, you have the potential to feel that way, and it doesn't happen, and it's not intimidating. There, there's an atmosphere of acceptance here. This is a place to come and, and work on your spirituality. It's helped me in a lot of ways. Um, a lot of it is uh, just all the, the tremendous, great friendships I've, I've made, um, the guys I've met here, uh, the guys who are at all different points of their faith journey. As iron sharpens iron, so does one man for another. We do sharpen each other. You know, the strengths of one man, you know, we need to borrow that, you know, in certain instances. And, you know, where a man can come to these weekends and really be a mentor. And in that 
opportunity to be ministered to and to minister, the growth that comes out of that, you don't leave that here. And you don't forget that. So I think a lot of guys crave that relationship because they go home and they don't really have a network. So they want to plug, plug, plug back in to the, to the network of men that, that really, um, they really feel like they're, they're their spiritual brothers. You know, we have an opportunity here on the weekend, an initiative that we training under torchlight. The issues that come up, the faith questions, uh, the challenges, the victories, the fears, when you realize that you have all of that in common and all of those things get discussed, uh, you're, you're almost transported to a, and I'm being honest with you, a different, a different reality. There has been a bit of a uh, feminization uh, of religion, which means that, you know, that in contemporary culture, that at least that I see in Western culture, uh, there's a particular thought that religion is for women, that love and love of God and love of others is for women. Now, this is a make, painting with broad strokes, uh, but I, I think just the idea that, no, the love of God and God's love for us and the love for one another, love is not... Uh, restricted to a feminine thing, uh, but that it's very masculine and, and part of our deepest being. And so I think it's an attempt at kind of recovering that, no, men do have a place in their relationship with God. Each day we begin with the rosary. We have daily mass. We, we try to bring uh, at each weekend a, a chaplain that understands men very well, who's able to hear their confessions, who's able to give them, them counsel. Um, we also have 24-7 uh, Eucharistic adoration. In addition to that, we, we have a procession, a Eucharistic procession uh, lit up by tiki torches where we process with our Lord and praise Him and adore Him uh, through the woods uh, into that adoration chapel. Though it's a very active weekend, it's a very busy weekend, there is much time uh, for men to reflect, to go on walks, pray to God, in the wild and, and ask God to lead them. Uh, we also bring in seven or eight priests every time to hear confessions. Uh, in addition to that, there are many men uh, who come on these retreats who are not Catholic, men who uh, maybe are just the, the outdoor nature of it appeals to them. The father-son relationship may appeal to them, or maybe a friend invites them. And it's a good way to reach a man on a very natural level and introduce him to the faith. You know, Mother Teresa said so beautifully, God speaks in the silence of our hearts. And so when you get guys away for a weekend like this, you get them to a place, a sacred place where silence rules so the true listening can become possible. And the true listening doesn't happen, you know, it doesn't have to happen when there's no noise. True listening can happen out on the trail when you're orienteering with other guys. It happens at mass, it happens in coming together at dinner. And so I, I think really all of these different programs are designed to, to create a sacred space where true listening to God and the deepest longings of our hearts just becomes very natural and possible. In, into the Wild is great for really any, any man. We've had a variety of men come on the weekend from all walks of life. We always have a, a large group of fathers with their teenage sons. We advertise the weekend to, to men age 11 and up. We got married men, we got religious men. We've had priests attend the retreat just for themselves. This is a great weekend for an outdoorsman. Uh, there's a lot of Catholic outdoorsmen. It's really a great opportunity for guys who love the outdoors, love hunting, love fishing, love the wilderness, to come and share their gifts with other men who have never had that experience. And on the flip side of that, there's guys who have never been in the wilderness in their life or have had a very limited experience. And they come because they feel like they're, they're really challenged by uh, being out here. You know, we get a lot of guys who come that are like, eh, I'm not sure if I want to do this. You know, and I don't, I have never spoken to any guy, I've never, you know, I see the evaluation forms, I've never once seen a guy that went here and wasn't happy with it, that didn't get something out of it. And uh, I would just say, give it a try. Come and see. Come and see what this is all about. Come see what Into the Wild is all about. There's something here for everyone. For any man who is contemplating whether to come on an Into the Wild, 
uh, I would just say that you know the, the chances that you're going to have a great experience are extremely high. I, I don't think there's a better way to spend your time. To go ahead and get away, make some time for the Lord, make some time for some really genuine, authentic brotherhood. Uh, yeah, it's just, just invaluable. And I, I think if you interviewed every guy here on Sunday as they're leaving, I, I think you'd see him saying that.